Hello everyone. Welcome to today's lecture on Fourier transform. In today's class, we'll be seeing how to make signals and take its Fourier transform as well as discuss the time expansion property of Fourier transform. So let's begin with mixing of signals. So the signals can be mixed with one another in additive or multiplicative form. So meaning you can either add to signals or multiply to signals. You can even subtract to signals but the most commonly used operative on signals is addition and multiplication. So let's see what an additive signal looks like. It's just two signals x1 of n and x2 of n. You add them and then today we are going to see signal looks like. Followed by multiplying two signals and taking its Fourier transform. So for additive mixing of signals, I'm going to use two sine waves of frequency 10 and 30 cycles for mixing. So these are the two sine waves and I'm adding them together since this is an additive mixing and after adding I'm going to see what is the Fourier transform looks like. From previous lectures it should be known now that the Fourier transform of this signal alone gives a peak which is equal to the frequency of the signal. So this signal here is sine 2 pi 10 t and the frequency is 10 so I get a peak at 10. For the next signal sine 2 pi 30 t the frequency is 30 t so I am going to obviously get a peak at 30. So this was discussed in the previous lecture. In today's lecture I am going to add these two signals and I am getting the third signal and the Fourier transform consists of two peaks at 30 and at 10. So it's just like adding these two Fourier transforms together. Good. Now let's come to the multiplicative mixing of signals. So for multiplicative mixing, we are going to take the same two example signals and multiply them together. So in order to carry out this multiplication, the trigonometric identity two of sine A sine B comes in handy, which is cos A minus B minus cos A plus B. So I'm going to apply. So here the A being 2 pi 10 T and B is equal to 2 pi. B is equal to 2 pi 30 T. I'm going to apply this trigonometric identity to our multiplicative mixing. I end up getting this form, the A minus B form and the A plus B form, which gives me the frequency of 10 plus 30, an additive frequency of 40 and a subtractive frequency of 20 without considering the sign. Now let's see how the Fourier transform is going to look like. So by, the, by definition we can tell that the Fourier transform of 2 pi 10 t is going to have a peak at 10 and the Fourier transform of 2 pi 30 t is going to have a peak at 30. So we have seen this for additive mixing also. Here for the cosine, the sine and cos have the same properties for the Fourier transform. So here we are going to see what ideally we are going to see is and we are going to see a peak at 40 for multiplicative mixing. So this is from just from the equations we are able to predict what the graph is going to look like. Let us go to the actual graph and see how it plots out. So I am using the same sine 2 pi 10 t. I get a peak at 10. The frequency of the signal is 10. Then I, the second signal which is having a frequency of 30. I am going to get a peak at 30. Interesting. We will see what the product of these two signals. Multiplicative mixing is going to give us. Just as we predicted, we are having a peak at 20. And then we are having another peak at 40. So this is 10 plus 30 and 10 minus 30. So sum of the frequency and the difference of the frequency. So that is all for the mixing of signals. Now let's go to the next topic for today's class. 
which is time expansion. So what is the time expansion property of Fourier transform say? It tells us that when a signal is expanded, its Fourier transform gets contracted or more cycles get added. So what does this mean? And the next sentence says they are inversely proportional. So what is the meaning of this statement that we see here? So it just says that when a signal is expanded, meaning the spacing between the values of the signals are increased. That is what expansion of a signal means. Expansion of a signal means the spacing between the points in a signal is more. Its FT gets contracted, meaning the opposite. The spacing between the points in the signal gets smaller. So the time expansion property, which is a very important property in Fourier transform, we will see the application of it in the coming lectures. So when the signal is expanded, its Fourier transform gets contracted. So that is the property that we are going to explain to you and see in detail in today's class. So here we have our Fourier transform formula. X of k is equal to x of n into the exponential multiplication. Now let us take a sample input signal 1010101. So this signal is packed. The spacing between the ones is a single zero. That is what the spacing between non-zero values. So the non-zero value here is one. The spacing between these two values is a single zero. Now, the index is n equal to zero to seven. So what does the index mean? So it's gonna become clear and clear in the next slide. So now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make, just for the sake of explanation, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to substitute W is equal to EXP minus J2 pi K by N. So, I'm going to take away all these terms over here because I don't need any of that to explain the time expansion property to you. So, I'm going to take that away and then what I'm left with is sigma N equal to 0 to N minus 1 X of N multiplied w to the power of n. So I am going to use only what you see on this RHS or the right hand side for further explanation of the time expansion property. So I have my signal here and the modified Fourier transform representation here and now the index of x of n becomes clear here is n equal to 0 to 7 which means the pull of my ones in the signal. So if I look at this signal, the position of the first one is at 0, the second one is at 2, and, the, well, and 4, and so on. So now, using this index 0, 2, 4, 6, my Fourier equation, my Fourier transform is going to write itself as 1 into w0 plus 1 into w square plus 1 w4 plus 1 w6, where the ones represents the value of the signal and 0, 2, 4, 6 represents the index. This is the Fourier transform for my signal in the new substitution form. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand. Since we are talking about time expansion, I'm going to expand this signal. So when I expand the signal, what I'm going to see, how do I expand the signal? I'm going to pad more zeros. So I'm going to add one more zero between one. So here there was the spacing was just a so two zero, so the spacing increases. So when the spacing increase, you are expanding the signal. So this signal is expanded compared to its previous signal. Now the indexing is 0, 3, 6, 9. Bringing the Fourier transform here, I'm going to get 1 into W0 plus etc. etc. And now this is the Fourier transform for the expanded signal. I'm going I can represent this one in this form where w is, I used the, still the same powers of 0, 2, 4, 6 to link or to correlate with the previous Fourier transform. So the previous, previous Fourier transform says this and the new Fourier transform says this. The difference or what is new here is these w1, w2 and w3. And what do they mean? What do they necessarily mean to the Fourier transform? These multiplicative factors w1, w2, w3 
contribute to the contraction of FT or contraction of FT or your spacing between the FT is going to get smaller or it's going to have more cycles. Contraction, more cycles, the spacing between the points smaller all implicate the reverse of expansion. So that is why they are inversely proportional. Good. So now let's quickly go through another example where I'm going to further expand the signal with three zeros. Now indexing becomes 0, 4, 8, 12. My Fourier transform becomes again 0, 4, 8, 12. Then I overcome it. I convert it with 0, 2, 4, 6. Then I get these new factors which contribute here to the contraction or more cycles in FT. Now I'm going to write this W246, W4, W6 as 2W1s, 2W2s and 2W3s. So why do I do this becomes more clearer in the next slide. So now let us go through, let us go through all the three signals and what are the Fourier transform. The first signal was a single spacing signal and this was the Fourier transform 0, 2, 4, 6. And that is not the Fourier transform. I'm just saying it for the sake of explanation so that it's easier to understand and grasp the concept. So that is the idea of using it as that way. So now I pad 1, 0. So which means the spacing between these ones have increased or I'm expanding the signal. So I got this Fourier transform. W1, W2, W3 are the extra things. And I this is going to add one cycle to my FP. So when I add one cycle to my FT, that is equaling saying that my FT is going to look contracted. When I do one more zero, I'm going to write it as W1, W1, W2, W2, W2. This is the last line in the previous slide. And this is going to add two cycles to FT. So you are seeing the pattern first. So I'm going to, this is keep going to expand. And whenever I see this multi multiplicative factors in the Fourier transform, that directly implicates that there are going to be more cycles in my FT, which means my FT is going to get more and more contracted. So that is why we say that time expansion and time domain leads to more cycles in FT or contraction in FT. They are inversely proportional. So this is the property of time expansion. Now I'm going to finish this lecture with a video that will show the clear picture of what we have seen so far as equations. So here for this signal, there is only one zero. The spacing is a single spacing signal that I have shown you. And the Fourier transform is looking in this form. Now, I have increased the spacing between the signal. I have put two more zeros here, as you can see. Now, what you're going to see is the spacing here, the signal has expanded. So, I have expanded the time signal, but the Fourier, this, what was occupying this much space is now only occupying this much space. So, the Fourier signal, the Fourier transform has contracted. You can easily tell this much space has been reduced to this much space. The spacing between the points in the Fourier transform has reduced or your Fourier signal has contracted. Your time signal has expanded and your Fourier signal gets contracted. So this is the time expansion property. Here, even more spacing. So I just go, I give her an 8. It doesn't matter. So what you're going to see is a really, really contracted signal in the Fourier space. Hope this clears you what time expansion is. So we have seen today mixing of signals, which is a very important property and also time expansion.
So today's class summary, we have seen two important properties of the features of Fourier transform. One is how do you do and multiplicatively, then what is time expansion and what is the significance of time expansion in Fourier space. Thank you for listening.